turn and face the cross. We've been in the midst of Lent for 40 days. We haven't said the word hallelujah in our sanctuary, and we're ready to shout hallelujah this morning. We have an um, Easter uh, call and response that we're about here. I'll say hallelujah, Christ is risen, and you say Christ is risen indeed, hallelujah. You ready? Yep. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our next hymn is actually from your hymn, though. If you want to open that up to hymn 365.
steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Your love is surprising, I can feel it rising, all the joy that's growing deep inside of me. And every time I see you, all your goodness shines through, I can feel this God's song rising up in me. who was raised from the dead to bring everlasting hope to all of you. Let us pray. Oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you've delivered all of us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin so that may, we may live with him forever in the joy of resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Christ is risen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Share God's love and God's peace with one another now. Mr. Alicia's got a children's sermon for him, so send children forward. Gabby, did you want to come? Something else. 
what's inside my egg. Do you know what, though? This egg reminds me of why we're here today. Did you know that on the very first Easter morning, the women went to the tomb where Jesus' body was, where he was buried, and they rolled, the stone was rolled away. They didn't roll the stone away. The stone was rolled away. And they went inside, and Jesus wasn't there. And just like my Easter egg, I was kind of disappointed. I think the women were probably disappointed because they wanted to see Jesus. But he wasn't there. But you know what? That disappointment turned into the best surprise of all. Because why? Because Jesus was alive. Jesus was alive. The best surprise of all. And I want you to remember this story. So I have an egg for you to help you remember that sometimes we have disappointments, right, in our lives. But God wants us to turn those, to find the surprises in those disappointments. So can you say a prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. Help us to know that even in our disappointments, we should find surprises. Just like the women at the tomb. Amen. So don't leave because I have a present for you. Why don't we uh, stand for the reading of our gospel this morning? The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. When the, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on, the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed, you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out, and they fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you, Jane. The other day I had to uh, find a place to eat in a room full of strangers. You've probably been in that awkward sort of situation. Uh, so I, I sat next to the guy who had said the prayer before the meal, you know, pastor in prayer, that sort of thing. So. Uh, and uh, it turned out he was a leader of a small church in West Virginia. And he found out I was a pastor. And in the midst of our conversation, he said, 
Do you have any young people at your church? And that made me instantly sad because he obviously didn't think I was a young person at the church. I mean, when did that happen? When did people stop thinking I was young? I, I saw this guy and I thought old person. And he saw me and he thought old person. So I, I said, yeah, we got a few. I don't know what to say to a question like that. And, uh, and he said, well, those young people that are in the church, they better be worried because there's going to be an accountant coming. And, uh, and I kind of laughed nervously and I said, well, I'm... I'm counting on God's grace and the resurrected Jesus on that day for myself. And he goes, grace only gets you so far. After that, it's whether you're good or whether you're bad that depends on where you're going. And he said it with such force, and I was afraid after he said it. And I'm a pastor. And I'm thinking, you know, the resurrected Jesus is supposed to be good news, and, and it wasn't anything but bad news the way this guy was saying it. And I thought about that encounter as I was reading this Mark text because the weird detail about this Mark text is that those women leave afraid, right? They're afraid. They're, and usually the, the answer you give of why they're afraid is because everyone's afraid when they see an angel. That's just what happens in Scripture. The, the first words out of every angel's mouth in Scripture is, do not be afraid, because it must really be terrifying to run into an angel in your life. But got to thinking, what if those women were afraid the same way I was afraid after hearing about the resurrected Jesus? And logically, that doesn't make a lot of sense because, I mean, these women were the closest to the closest of Jesus who walked on this earth. I mean, they not only loved him, they, they gave up everything and they followed him and they dedicated their life to his ministry. You would think that if someone that you loved so deeply and passionately died, and now you find out he's alive, well, you would be excited and ecstatic at that news. But they weren't excited and ecstatic, that's for sure. They left afraid. What if when they saw that angel sitting where Jesus was supposed to be laying in that tomb, that a light bulb went on? And they said, Jesus, dead, now alive, angel here, then maybe this Jesus that we've been following isn't just a wise, wonderful, and loving man. Maybe he's something much more than that. Maybe they started connecting all the dots. Jesus, dead, but now alive, Jesus is God. And if Jesus is God, then that means that it was God that found me when I was at my worst and called me to be his follower. It was God that I confessed that shameful thing that I told Jesus about that one night. It's God that knows me. What if the resurrected Jesus suddenly appears like anything but good news? I mean, you would think the resurrected Jesus would come back hopping mad at those people that put him on the cross. But the resurrected Jesus might also be hopping mad at all those disciples that failed him in the worst time, exactly when he needed them the most. If the resurrected Jesus knows everything about your heart, like Jesus would have known these women, the goodness in that heart that bursts out and the hard as stone parts of that heart, then the resurrected Jesus becomes bad news rather than good news, something we should fear, something that that old man from West Virginia had in mind when he was talking to me. And if that's the case, then what these women fear not only makes sense, that they tell no one about it makes even more sense. Because who wants to shout out bad news like that? You just go home and keep that kind of stuff to yourself. But <clears throat> if that's what those women were thinking, if that's what that man from West Virginia is thinking, then they're both wrong. Because this is good news, not bad news. Jesus comes back uh, to those disciples to invite them, though not hopping mad, but to invite them back into community. It's not that Jesus doesn't care what those disciples did. It's that Jesus doesn't care enough to stop loving them. 
Jesus comes back to invite these women knowing their hearts just as he knows our hearts. And it's not that Jesus doesn't care about those dark places in our hearts. It's that Jesus doesn't care enough to stop loving us. This is good news. This is simply good news. And if the church could just understand that and grasp that, rather than wrapping bad news in the midst of it, it'd be a whole different story. No wonder people don't come to our churches, right? Who would want to be scared like that of the resurrected Jesus you might bump into? But if we could be clear that this is good news, that Jesus comes back for even sloppy, sinful slugs like me. People are hungry for that good news, and they'll beat a path to your door. I know this to be true. One of my faith heroes is a guy named uh, Father Gregory Boyle. He's a um, priest that was called to the poorest of the poor uh, parishes in East L.A., in the 1980s. He's been there ever since. And he started a place called Homeboy Industries that reaches out to the gangs that are around this place. Since he's been in that parish, he's buried almost 200 gang members in that amount of time. It's a violent, violent area. And his hope is to take gang members and their families and move them from a culture of hopelessness to a culture of hope. And he's done remarkable things. But when he got to this church, it was anything but a place that was reaching out to their neighborhoods. It was a place like most churches, full of good-looking, good-acting people <laughs> that were ready to invite you into their presence as long as you were good-looking and good-acting people. And they were closed off to their neighborhood. So when Father Boyle took the parish garage and created a gym out of it for these former gang members, they responded. They, they, he put weights in there and a basketball hoop up. They came over and they, they started lifting weights and, and they started playing basketball in the parking lot and they started uh, smoking cigarettes in the parking lot and throwing their butts and, and cursing and swearing in the parking lot and, and drinking things out of little brown bags in the parking lot. And the, and the whole church is starting to get nervous. I don't know whether this is a good idea, Father Boyle. But it all came to a head when a guy named Ramiro started coming to worship, a former gang member who had spent about 10 years in prison. You would think that would be a good thing, right? That's why we got the gym out there. That's why we're reaching out to these people to get them into worship. But like a lot of guys in prison, he had a lot of tattoos on him. And he had a big tattoo on his forehead and huge block letters, Boyle writes, from one hairline to the other. Hopefully he didn't have as much of a hairline and forehead as I do, but... But there are just three words on it. F the world. He had the F word on his forehead in huge black letters. Children, tell your parents what that means. <clears throat> and when Father Boy... And when this man came up... When this man came up with his hands out for the body of Christ in the midst of the worship with that word on his forehead. The place went ballistic. People said, no, this is too much and too far. They called a congregational meeting, and Father Boyle was sure that the gig was up, that, that they were going to close their doors to the neighborhood like they'd been closed before and call up the bishop and say, get this priest out of here. And when he gets to the meeting, this woman stands up angry, and she says... We are reaching out to gang members in this congregation. Father Boy goes, uh-oh, it's over. And then her next words were, because that's what Jesus would do. And the whole place erupted in applause. And person after person stands up after that to say the same thing. And that church never looked back, Boyle writes. And they are a landmark in the United States internationally for the work they're doing with Homeboy Industries and on East LA. Now this is good news. Not bad news by any stretch of the imagination. Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, didn't come back to separate us into good people and, and, and those going to hell. 
The resurrected Jesus came back to gather all of us, every single one of us. He came back to gather the good, the bad, <laughs> and even the ugly he wants us to have. He came back to invite all of us and everything that's within inside of us, the good and the bad and the ugly that's here. And if the church could understand not only that this is good news, but that this is something we need to share, then people will beat down a path to our door. We just need to stop being afraid. Amen. And uh, share the good gifts that you brought for God's ministry in this world. And then we'll eat a meal of God's presence, the resurrected Jesus' presence. my feet upon the rock he made my footsteps burn many will see
Christian, please join us. to announce this good news. Give us courage to announce that and strike all fear from us. May we be an unadulterated witness of your love, Lord, so all may know that they are welcome here to meet the resurrected Jesus by our words and by our actions. Give hope to those who need hope this morning, especially those who are grieving, especially Kathy Reed in the midst of her grief now. And Alicia Blake and Betty Reinhardt and Laura Burkhart too. Pray for those who need healing, especially George Hartman and Harold Kaler, Meg Reidler and Tish and Scott and Kimberly, and others named aloud now. Bring us peace, Lord, and let us sing. as you promised you would, not just with bread and wine this morning, but with your very presence, the presence of the resurrected Jesus that lives and reigns in heaven now. Make this heavenly food as Jesus promised you would in the night in which he was betrayed where he took bread and broke it and gave thanks, saying, take and eat. This is my body and it's been given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we proclaim the very mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Come, Spirit, come and fill us in this meal so that we can fill your world with the love that we've received in Jesus. The good news that sends us out shouting, Hallelujah. kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen you may be seated 
please know that this isn't a Lutheran meal, it's, it's God's meal, so everyone's invited to come and eat the bread and wine of God's presence. Our assistants will come out and they'll bring this meal to you to share. There's four tables. I encourage if you're visiting, come, come just, just grab it, Leslie. <laughs> we'll eat later. I, uh, I encourage you to, um, if you're visiting, to uh, use the tables that are down on the ground. So receive the bread here and then take it by intention by dipping the bread into the wine, taking both at the same time. If you're an old pro at this, you can try the two that are up top here, and then you got to snake around everything to get back to your seat. Uh, there is a common cup up top, too, if, you, if you'd prefer to use that. A little overflowing. That way. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice, you became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of life, I'm in that place once again. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Lord, now that we've been fed with your very presence, may we go out and shout the good news of the resurrection that saves all of us. Amen. Well, we did it, huh? Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. someone and go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And next week, bring a friend. Amen.